How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donahue here again. This time we're going to take a look at bonding and solid and different types of solids. So our objectives will be to describe the different types of solids in terms of their structure and their properties that arise as a result. So we're going to be looking at metallic solids, ionic solids, molecular solids, and covalent network solids. So let's start with uh, just solid structure in general. We know that most solids take on a regular repeating pattern. These are called crystalline solids, right? So when we think of crystals, we think of this regular geometric shape. That's a crystalline solid. But sometimes you can have liquids that freeze before the atoms have arranged in an orderly fashion. We call these amorphous solids, right? So they're kind of jumbled up, but they're locked in place still. Um, the A prefix means not, morph means shape. So amorphous means it's without a definite shape, right? So glass is an example of an amorphous solid. Solids are generally classified based on the type of forces that are holding those particles together. So let's look at metallic solids. They're held together by metallic bonding, right? Crazy name. Um, atoms are going to be arranged regularly, and there's like a sea of valence electrons. So you can see those valence electrons are delocalized. They're not stuck on any one atom. They're moving out uh, throughout the entire substance. Uh, and that's why they're so good at conducting electricity. Those electrons are able to move around without much resistance. Uh, they're also good conductors of heat. They have luster, meaning they're shiny. Uh, they're malleable, so you can press them into different shapes without it actually breaking. Uh, that's how you can get like springs and stuff. They're malleable. You can change their shape. They're not brittle. Whereas ionic solids, they're held together because of this electrostatic attraction. We have these differences in charge. So electro means charges, static means unchanging. So it's saying that, hey, this ion always has a positive charge, and this ion has a negative charge always. And we know that opposites attract. This is a very strong attraction, which means as a result, ionic solids have very high melting points. They have really high boiling points. They're brittle. If you break it, they'll crumble. Um, think of like table salt, right? And maybe you get a big crystal but you know you just shake it up a little bit and it breaks it down into smaller crystals uh, <clears throat> and ionic solids will conduct electricity if they're dissolved or in the liquid state because the big thing here is the charges need to be able to move around so in a metallic solid the electrons are free to go wherever they want it conducts electricity for an ionic solid not going to happen but if you melted it so that those particles particles could flow then it'll conduct electricity or if you dissolve them in water now those particles have been dissociated and they can move around it'll conduct electricity all right molecular solids so neutral molecules are held together by attractive forces right the strength of which varies widely depending on the molecule here we got water they have hydrogen bonding that's a relatively strong attractive force but if we're looking at like methane where it's only has uh, dispersion forces uh, not nearly as strong so in general, smaller and nonpolar molecules have weaker intermolecular attractive forces, which means their boiling points and melting points tend to be lower. The opposite is also true. Uh, larger polar molecules have stronger attractive forces, which means they'll have higher boiling and melting points. Uh, but compared to other solids, molecular solids generally have a lower melting point. They're also not conductive. There's no charges uh, moving around, so they're non-conductive. Right, so think of like sugar crystals. Here we got some sugar crystals. Not gonna conduct electricity. Even if you dissolve them, there's no charges moving around, so not conductive. Which brings us to covalent network solids. When we think of network, we think about a bunch of things connected together, right? The networking or social network. You're talking about all these connections. And that's true with covalent network solids. So all of the atoms are covalently bonded together, which pretty make, much makes it like one huge, large molecule. An example would be diamond, right? So diamond's made of carbon, uh, same as graphite, but the difference is, hey, in diamond, all of those carbon atoms are bonded together, giving us a network solid. So these have really high melting points because if you're gonna melt it, you actually need to break these covalent bonds, and those are much stronger than any intermolecular attractive force, uh, which also means they're very hard. They don't scratch easily. They're very strong, and they're not conductive. Um, so yeah, summarize. Can you describe the different types of solids in terms of their structure and the properties that arise as a result? Those being the four we're focusing on? I hope so. Hope you found it helpful. See you in class. Okay, bye.